lovely Tashlech ceremony yesterday on the beautiful red bridge at Lover's Leap uh, right here in New Milford. Uh, as we took pieces of challah, symbolic of our transgressions, and we prepared to cast them over the bridge, there was only one problem. The Housatonic River leading into Lake Lilanona was bright green, like Kelly green, uh, with algae. Uh, it's not normally like that, uh, but in a year with more rain, it might be crystal clear. But it has hardly rained all summer, and it was a fairly light winter as well. Not only has there been very little precipitation, but it's been hotter than it ever has been, causing the water to evaporate. Did you know that the last two years were the hottest on record in 2016 is projected to continue the trend and break all previous records. The World Health Organization estimates that 160,000 people die each year worldwide from the effects of global warming, such as heat stroke, increased diseases from insects that thrive in hotter climates, malnutrition from crop destruction. By 2020, this number is expected to double. By 2050, 25% of all plants and animal species may be in jeopardy of extinction. Since the Industrial Revolution, atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide have increased by more than 30% to levels unsurpassed in the past 800,000 years. The effects of climate change, such as droughts, Flooding and natural disasters could force as many as 150 million climate refugees to migrate from their homes. The Mishnah teaches that there are four New Years, the one for trees, the one for kings, the one for tithing, and the one for years. Rosh Hashanah, the New Year for years, marks the anniversary of the creation of the world. There is no better way to celebrate the creation of the world during Rosh Hashanah than to recommit ourselves to preserving it. As we engage in the holy work of tshuva, repentance, and self-reflection on our actions, we turn our thoughts to the environment and our role as stewards of God's creation. Being created last but not least has its benefits, but with those privileges come great responsibilities. We learn in Genesis 2.15 that God took Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden, la ovda ulashomra. Often this is translated as to till and to tend it. The King James Version is to dress it and keep it. Many translations speak in terms of dominating and subduing the world as though it were something to be used and abused for our pleasure. However, that's not what the Torah really says. In my translation, God took Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden, la ulashomra, to serve and to preserve it. An Eved is not a master, it's a servant. Despite everything we have done to damage our environment, Midrash teaches us that we are supposed to be doing exactly the opposite. Kohelet Rabbah 713 tells us the following. When God created the first human beings, God led them around all the trees of the Garden of Eden and said, look at my works. See how beautiful they are, how excellent. For your sake, I created them all. See to it that you do not spoil and destroy my world. For if you do, there will be no one else to repair it. When we recite the motzi before breaking bread and we say, We're saying, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Now, if you think about it, God doesn't actually bring forth bread from the earth. God creates the world. God creates the environment conducive for the wheat to grow. But if we want bread, we need to plant that wheat. We need to harvest the crop, grind it to flour, mix it with water and yeast, knead it, bake it. Don't forget to let it cool before we can eat it. Bread is something that is made in partnership with God. God provides the ingredient. We provide the labor. The blessing over bread teaches us that we must also be partners in creation. 
Genesis Rabbah 115 teaches that scripture at times puts the earth before heaven and other times the heaven before the earth to teach that the two are of equal value. As we turn our minds towards heaven and seek forgiveness and repentance, we must also remember that the earth is of equal importance. Just as we seek to mend our ways, so too should we take this opportunity to recognize that all that we do to harm the environment, and we must consider what repair we have the power to do. We know that the world does not belong to us as a possession to be used or discarded, because Psalm 24, 1 teaches, Ladonai ha'aretz umlo'a tevel v'yoshveva. The earth belongs to God and all that it holds, the world and all of its inhabitants. If the world belongs to God, then our role is to be its guardians and gardeners. Midrash Genesis Rabbah 13.3 teaches that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said, three things are equally important, earth, humanity, and do. Rabbi Levi Bar Chia said, these three terms are each composed, at least in the Hebrew, each of those words has three letters in it. To teach that without the earth, there is no do, without the do, there is no earth, and without them both, there is no humanity. This text reminds us that we must value and protect all works of creation equally. Without do and earth, there is no humanity, and therefore we must not just protect our environment, but ensure that all people have equal accesses, access to everything that we need from this environment. Another perspective to take on the environment is the fact that women, children, and people living in poverty are often those who suffer the most from pollution. Poor people can't afford organic vegetables for their children. Poor people are exposed to the worst pesticides when they harvest our food for us. Developing children in developing countries do not have enough clean water to bathe and hydrate their developing bodies. In a truly just society, all people deserve equal access to clean air, water, energy, land, and all natural resources. Throughout the United States, there is a clear connection between race, class, and access to natural resources. Additionally, those who contribute the least to climate change and greenhouse gas emissions often face the greatest burden of its consequences. Do you know that people who live closest to United States chemical facilities are 75% more likely to be black and 60% more likely to be Latino. And 71% of African Americans live in countries in violation of federal air pollution, or I should say counties, in violation of federal air pollution standards as compared with 58% of non-Hispanic whites. Lead poisoning, such as what happened in Flint, Michigan, impacts black children twice as much as white children. From 2007 to 2010, the percentage of black children with high levels of lead in their blood was 5.6%, while it was just 2.4% in white children. Heat-related deaths occur at 150 to 200% greater rate in black communities than in white communities, due to the large population of black people who live in cities which trap heat and warm them more quickly. Nature is an infinite resource of food and water for us, but it is also a source of inspiration when it is preserved and protected. You know what I'm talking about if you've ever had the privilege to stand on the precipice of the Grand Canyon or to hear the power of Niagara Falls or to climb to the top of a mountain, to see the sunset over the ocean, catch wildflowers in bloom, see a rainbow, see a bald eagle or a black bear, as we sometimes see right here in New Milford in our own backyards. Nature can be uplifting, but it can also be quite comforting. My grandmother tells me that when my grandfather first passed away, the only thing that could soothe her was the soft sound of the ocean. And I know that when I was going through my divorce, there was nothing for me so reassuring as the quiet trickle of a stream deep in the woods. 
in a world in which so many people are playing such a critical role in whittling away the precious legacy we have received in this amazing environment where we have the privilege to live our lives. I take heart in the important work being done by Echo Judaism organizations like Hazon, committed to creating a healthier and more sustainable Jewish community and a healthier and more sustainable world for all. You have to love their motto, the Torah is a commentary on the world and the world is a commentary on the Torah. They say this reflects our determination to apply Jewish thought to some of the greatest challenges of our time and our belief that the act of doing so is good not only for the world, but also for the renewal of Jewish life itself. His own sponsors rides in America and Israel to raise awareness about sustainable living and to raise funding to provide for those in need. Organizations like Hazon help us remember that in the era of Hurricane Katrina's and super mega storms, and the damage that can be done by human intervention or lack thereof. We have a responsibility to be God's partners in creation, serving and preserving this wonderful world we have the good fortune to enjoy every day of our lives. As we embrace the high holidays, we begin the introspective self-reflection of tshuva. Let us consider the many ways in which our own choices can impact the environment one way or another for the generations to come. I'll conclude with the words of Hannah Senesh, which she wrote on kibbutz before volunteering to serve on a secret mission to help rescue Holocaust survivors in Nazi-occupied Yugoslavia. Her mission would prove fatal, but her words will live on forever. Eli, Eli, shelo yigamer la'olam, ha'chol v'hayam, rishrush shel ha'mayim, barak ha'shamayim tefilat ha'adam. O oh God, my God, I pray that these things never end. The sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. Tenihi Ratzon.